Welcome to week 9 of the course, where our focus turns to ecosystem health, resilience and sustainability indicators. This presentation will provide a comparative discussion of ecological footprint analysis, genuine progress indicators and gross national happiness, which are three recognised indicators of sustainability and social ecological system health. The 1987 Brundtland Commission report provides the most widely accepted definition of sustainable development, being development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Perspective on what is to be sustained versus what is to be developed are widely conflicting, however. Both government and non-government organisations have recognised the need to measure progress towards identified sustainability goals and to guide decision making. This has been achieved through the development of a diverse range of indicators, however currently no existing indicators are universally accepted or influential due to conflicting objectives for sustainable development. Sustainability indicators assess progress towards identified broad goals through achieving quantifiable targets, such as decreasing the proportion of electricity generated by fossil fuels by 25% within 10 years. To date, almost a thousand indicator sets have been developed and apply to a wide range of spatial scales ranging from global to local. The ecological footprint is a widely used sustainability indicator that compares resource demands of different populations. It can be defined as a measure of how much productive land and water an individual, a city, a country or humanity requires to produce the resources it consumes and to absorb the waste it generates using prevailing technology. As the ecological footprint simply measures the level of human demand on the environment, it has been criticised for its inability to indicate whether or not those demands are sustainable. Ecological footprint analysis attempts to address this problem and compares the ecological footprint against available regenerative capacity known as biocapacity to measure sustainability. Ecological footprint analysis indicator data consists of the combined area of biologically productive land and fishing grounds available on either a global or country scale versus those currently used by the corresponding human population. This includes cropland, grazing land, forest, built up land, fresh and saltwater fisheries as well as carbon emissions and sequestration. Recent global ecological footprint analysis data indicates that the current ecological footprint is 50% larger than the capacity of our planet's life supporting ecosystems referred to as an ecological overshoot. This translates to the Earth taking 1.5 years to generate the renewable resources that we use and the waste that we produce in a year. The global ecological footprint consists of combined data from individual countries with population growth, consumer habits and production efficiency being key drivers. Individual country footprints therefore vary significantly. If all humans live like an average Indonesian, only two thirds of Earth's biocapacity would be used versus four Earths required for life as an average United States resident. The Genuine Progress Indicator was developed in recognition of the inadequacy of gross domestic product as an indicator of well-being. Gross domestic product does not distinguish between good and bad spending, distribution of growth, depletion of natural capital and ecosystem services, or include things that have no market price but are good for our society. The Genuine Progress Indicator is a monetary-based index that adjusts gross domestic product being the total value of goods and services produced to reflect social, environmental and economic costs and benefits. The adjustments are positive for benefits such as volunteer labour and education, and negative for costs such as crime, unemployment and environmental degradation. A stable or increasing genuine progress indicator means that social and environmental capital, upon which all goods and services depend, will be equal to or better for the next generation. However, if the genuine progress indicator is decreasing, it shows that progress is eroding social and environmental capital, thereby diminishing resources for future generations. A number of countries such as the United States have identified the trend of a widening gap between gross domestic product and genuine progress indicator figures. This suggests economic growth is increasingly being offset by the social and environmental costs of that growth and that true welfare is stagnant or on the decline. The genuine progress indicator can also be applied at a regional level. An analysis of Victoria between 1986 and 2003 showed that growth in the genuine progress indicator of 22% being 1.5% per annum was significantly less than the gross domestic product increase of 45% being 2.5% per annum over the same period. The concept of gross national happiness originates from the 1729 Bhutanese legal code. However, the King of Bhutan first created the phrase in 1972. He declared it to be more important than gross national product, and since his declaration, it has continued to guide national policy and development goals in Bhutan. 
Happiness is regarded by the Bhutanese to be multidimensional and in addition to individual well-being, it includes concern for others and harmony with nature. Gross national happiness embodies this definition through four pillars, which include sustainable and equitable economic development, environmental conservation, preservation and promotion of culture and heritage, and good governance. The Gross National Happiness Index consists of nine domains that encompass the four pillars, including psychological well-being, time use, community vitality, cultural diversity, ecological resilience, living standard, health, education and good governance. These domains comprise of 33 cluster indicators, which have 124 variables used to indicate sufficiency in the relevant happiness domain. The Gross National Happiness Index is based on a representative survey conducted in all 20 districts of Bataan, including both rural and urban areas. It divides the population into four subgroups based on the levels of sufficiency achieved, including unhappy, narrowly happy, extensively happy, and deeply happy. The 2010 survey indicated happiness differences between rural and urban areas. In rural areas, community vitality, cultural diversity, and good governance contribute more to happiness versus living standards, education, and health in urban areas. Rural areas, insufficiency was worse in education and living standards versus governance, time use, and culture in urban areas. In summary, sustainability and ecosystem health indicators are as diverse and numerous as the complex adaptive systems that they are trying to measure. I will conclude with the following relevant quote. We need many indicators because we have many different purposes and have many worldviews. But indicators may help narrow the differences between these worldviews.